Hello everybody and welcome to another video about music and records. So uh, my last uh, VC oriented video was uh, rather conventional to some extent. Uh, so I was mostly talking about prog rock and jazz funk and jazz fusion records. So I thought uh, let's go back uh, to um, some uh, rather weird records. Um, that is probably um, something uh, that is a little more typical <laughs> with my VC videos, at least from time to time. Uh, but um, yeah, I just can't help it. Um, I'm just into a lot of uh, these kind of uh, atmospheric, uh, strange albums uh, that uh, don't seem to have uh, any kind of proper structure or any kind of uh, song quality at all not to mention hit potential. So um, let's uh, have a look. Um, I've already prepared my stack here. I will take a sip of coffee. And um, let's check it out. This here is a really nice album and I've been listening to it just uh, early in the morning today. Um, this is called Isola del Suono by Futuro Antico. And this uh, was a Italian or it Italy-based project uh, from, uh, I guess, uh, very late 70s and early 80s. Um, this was released uh, on Black Sweat Records and um, it's kind of a really fascinating, nice time capsule. So this band, um, the kind of music they did was uh, kind of experimental, atmospheric music. You could call it proto-ambient if you want to. Um, there was a lot of uh, fourth world music charm to their sound and um, this was a live recording that they did, uh, let me read it here, um, this was a live performance held in Piazza Santa Stefano in Bologna on July 17th 1980. Um, so this was a part of a, this was a part of a experimental music festival and uh, Coincidentally, um, these guys had, during their performance, they had uh, some really, really good recording equipment at their disposal. The sound is really outstanding. Not only does it capture um, the, the atmosphere of this performance, uh, but uh, it just really sounds great and very professional. And um, interestingly, this was not uh, released for a long time, I think. Uh, this probably only existed as a tape handed down privately, um, but uh, not long ago it has been uh, rediscovered and uh, yeah, came out as an album. Um, so this is pretty cool and uh, I really like to have this type of uh, records. So the next album is from Italy as well and came out uh, in the mid 80s. I'm talking about this reissue of Moon on the Water. Now, Moon on the Water uh, was a kind of atmospheric group or band that uh, focused on uh, percussive music. Their sound was certainly uh, mostly influenced by Middle Eastern and Far East traditional music and uh, their instrumentation certainly reflected that a lot. Um, so I would again like to kind of evoke uh, this term fourth world music kind of in the spirit of John Hassel, it's certainly there a lot. Now, when I was listening to this for the first time, I immediately felt reminded of, a, of another band that uh, existed in Japan just a few years prior to that. And that's the Makwaju Ensemble. So uh, they put out two records back in the day. This one is the, the Key Motion, their debut album. Um, so this was a percussion group uh, around uh, Midori Takada. The second album they released was just called Makwaju. Um, and uh, yeah, their sound is kind of, to some extent, kind of reminded me of Moon on the Water or rather the other way around. Uh, and so if you like Midori Takada and Makwaju, you could probably pretty much like this record here, particularly if you are generally kind of into traditional percussions and uh, percussive music. So let's get to my probably favorite 
ambient group and that would of course be OUK Conjugate from England and uh, this is the latest album called uh, called Attention of Opposites part one and part two. Now this was already released I think uh, maybe a year ago or one and a half years ago and uh, was released only on a tape. Now I was biding my time because I kind of felt or knew that uh, sooner or later uh, this will come out on vinyl or at least on CD as it did and uh, this is a double album and uh, kind of uh, it has a kind of a programmatic uh, structure because each disc is basically a uh, recording by one of the two current members of Oyukai Conjugate so uh, the the one the one disc is all music by Roger and the other disc is all music by Andrew um, so um, in the history of music uh, this type of idea usually um, uh, doesn't produce that great results thinking of uh, Pink Floyd's Uma Guma or uh, maybe Emerson Lake and Palmer's uh, Works Volume 1 <laughs> In this case it works really well and it's a wonderful uh, atmospheric journey. Rather dark and gritty in some moments. Uh, so um, Oyukai Conjugate. Now let me stay with Oyukai Conjugate because um, there was also another release from this band that I want to share with you. And that is a 12 inch entitled Sun Chemical. Now uh, there is a bit of a story behind that. Um, this had once been released as a CD, I think like in the mid 90s. Um, this was super interesting because at this point they had released probably around four to five albums and their last three albums were these really outstanding kind of organic ambient for the world records. At the same time, um, this was the era of electronic dance music coming up and everything was being remixed and uh, having a remix was kind of uh, the thing back in the day and uh, so an ambient group having a remix album it can probably go um, in many directions and uh, I guess the the rather uninspired cliche would be just to have some uh, droney sound from uh, your album and just added some electronic uh, drum computer stuff to it. Um, that's not what is going on here at all. This is fascinating. They basically took only one track um, from their album Equator called Sun Chemical and uh, uh, basically six guys uh, took a shot at this track and created this amazing um, compilation of six remixes that uh, had their own individual names and, um, and first of all the original track is almost unrecognizable here um, and um, there is some of the best electronic music I know on this album it's quite outstanding so if you ever I mean this sold out pretty quickly so if you ever if you're ever looking for some really good kind of moody, atmospheric, uh, electronic dance music, then this is a pretty good CD to uh, cover that craving. So anyway, 25 years later, um, Optimo Music released this vinyl version of this remix album. This is uh, not as extended as the CD, so uh, there are only four of these six tracks on this version here. Um, and uh, of course I could not say no. So um, that's some news from Oyukai Conjugate. Now uh, I also wanted to show you some uh, some CDs. First of all um, there was this re-release. Uh, this was originally, this came out originally on vinyl in the early 80s, I think in 1981. This is a Planetary Unfolding by Michael Stearns. It's quite a legendary um, ambient soundtrack, very cosmic, uh, very futuristic, uh, some uh, great interstellar droning going on here. 
And um, so when Project uh, decided to release it new on CD, I could not say no. And uh, for me, this is certainly this type of music that actually kind of lends itself better or more towards the CD format than uh, the vinyl format, honestly. Um, but uh, as far as atmospheric and experimental electronic music goes, uh, this certainly is a classic, uh, and so if you like, you should check it out. Michael Stern's Planetary Unfolding. So, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on to some uh, really dark classic. So I got this album here. It's a re-release of the Zamia Lemani album by SPK. Um, so um, in the second half of the 80s, this was an album with quite some cult following, so to speak. Um, Graham Revel's band uh, certainly fascinated people in the underground. And um, for me, this was a very formative time because uh, I was like in my late teens and I completely dropped out of uh, any kind of overground life, particularly as far as art and music goes. And uh, I went totally underground and listened only to very to, to music that had only a very very limited exposure and uh, in those dark and quite uh, odd circles um, SPK was really revered as uh, a very fascinating industrial band and, and this was I think uh, their third album um, but uh, interestingly their third album is uh, Certainly less industrial than uh, the previous one, but uh, it's more a exploration of sonic layers. Uh, it's much more... Uh, I, I certainly don't want to call it dark ambient or something, because this would not fit here. Uh, it's just a very atmospheric album. It has a very dark attitude uh, and... Um, it has this uh, subtitle Songs of Byzantine Flowers. I guess you probably could see this record much closer to the stylistic realm of early Dead Can Dance. Um, that's kind of the world where it was uh, um, existing back in the day. Um, certainly, on the other hand, you could uh, um, associate it with projects like uh, Leibach or Nurse with Wound. Um, so um, it's kind of in this uh, acoustic realm. Um, it's it's actually a pretty pleasant listen, uh, but of course it has a very kind of intrinsic sadness, and uh, it's uh, also a very nice reissue. Um, it comes with a bit of liner notes by Graham Revell, and uh, you can really believe me if someone had told me in 1987 that the guy from SPK will one day become kind of a big animal in the world of Hollywood soundtrack industry, I would laugh in your face. <laughs> but that's exactly how it happened. So, um, yeah, so this is a really nice reissue and um, um, I certainly enjoyed to listen uh, to this music because I have not listened to it for many, many uh, years, uh, if not even decades, and it sounded really fresh in my ears and uh, kind of took me back down the memory lane. So, uh, Zamia Lemani by SPK. So, this next album here, let me have a sip of coffee first. Mm, that's an interesting project here. So this was recorded by an artist called Iona Fortune, or Iona, or maybe Iona, Iona Fortune. It's called the Tower of Eye. Now uh, it feels to me, and I don't know if I understood this correctly, but uh, this entire album is dedicated to the art, to the Chinese art of I Ching. And uh, it is my impression that this is supposed to be the first of eight uh, albums. And uh, I think in the world of I Ching, the number eight is very important. Um, and it has eight tracks. And each track is basically dedicated to one of these I Ching hexagrams. And I think the idea is that in the end you have eight albums with eight tracks, which is 64. And I think 64 is kind of an important number. 
Um, I don't know any about those things, but um, you know, you kind of read now and then something about stuff like that. So um, the music, uh, the music is quite fascinating. Um, I would not uh, oversimplify it by calling it ambient because I don't think it is ambient. It uses a lot of uh, sounds that you would associate with uh, Chinese music, but also Southeast Asia. Uh, there is a certain gamelan type of uh, feeling about some of the tracks um, and um, overall it's a very pleasant listen. Um, it's quite idiosyncratic and uh, honestly it doesn't sound like all the rest of the atmospheric albums. It's, it's very much a thing of its own and uh, in that uh, instance quite unique I would say. So um, I'm really curious if uh, this artist, if she can manage to actually follow through with it and if in the end there will be eight of these records there. Sounds like a big task. Um, yeah, here's another interesting record uh, that uh, I... This type of music, I really like to collect this type of stuff. It's, uh, it's always very appealing to me. So uh, this is called Ikiru or The Wanderer. And uh, this uh, came out as a type of uh, uh, charity record uh, that was recorded uh, supporting a some environmental group uh, that was uh, struggling to protect uh, the 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 monarch butterfly whom you can see here on the cover if you look closely you probably already have recognized the butterfly now this album was recorded by Louis Landes Levy who is a um, famous Sarangi player the Sarangi is a kind of a South Asian Indian and Nepal Nepalese uh, string instrument that uh, could be described as a very kind of distant cousin to a fiddle uh, and uh, has this very uh, very sort of emotional sound that often you actually associate with uh, traditional Indian music um, this kind of uh, this kind of crying string sound um, played with a small bow so on this record um, both sides um, contain a kind of a 15 to 20 minute long cut or just jam with Landis Levy playing her instrument but at the same time it's quite beautifully interwoven with uh, uh, kind of natural sounds and kind of electronic effects um, so in the end you get a very kind of a unique sounding experimental album it is very atmospheric and uh, certainly very pleasant for the ears I think uh, it's not a noisy record uh, it's more like a type of ambient album, uh, although it would not be a, a very apt categorization, I think. So um, that's Ikiru or The Wanderer. Uh, and um, this uh, had been uh, recorded in 2017. So that's actually not that long ago. I really enjoyed this type of music. I mean, I, I also do actually listen to it. So. Uh, it's not just snobbery <laughs> and I've been I had been listening to this one probably three or four days ago and uh, it's a great pleasant listen particularly if you are walking through forests uh, this is a nice soundtrack and uh, it's very kind of funny if you can't really distinguish if the birds you are listening to are actually uh, on the record or <laughs> in the woods very much in the same vein as the previous the previous album so this is called Luxury Apartments. Um, again, each side of this record has only one track on it. Uh, very kind of experimental, uh, very atmospheric. Um, here in this case, uh, certainly uh, working more with all type of samples and even uh, kind of a keyboard and organ playing. And uh, it's all very interesting and very unique. Um, this is uh, was recording recorded by an artist uh, named David Tyrk, who unfortunately died very very young. The age you can see him here on this in this photograph. Uh, it was a um, some sort of uh, climbing accident, and um, yeah, and and this uh, was a experimental recording by him 
that uh, remained archived for many many years and now had been rediscovered and uh, released. Um, so this came out on Finders Keepers in 2015. So uh, another example of a very kind of interesting and certainly pleasant listen of a music that uh, you wouldn't call it ambient because I think it's much closer to genres like musique concrète, um, but uh, certainly not in a noisy way. So um, certainly an interesting album and again one of those somewhat uh, exotic or, or, or awkward records that I really love to collect. So Luxury Apartments um, on Finders Keepers.